Occasional check-ins with Rob. What is going on in Nigeria? Well, the the Nigerian government is starting to loosen up its restrictions on GMOs and is starting to uh, provide uh, farmers access to BT cotton and BT cowpeas in Nigeria. And I know Chief Adu because I was on his farm. Who's He's Chief now Adu? The Minister of Agriculture. So that's the Minister of Agriculture. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're talking about. It. I'm recording right now, so oh. we're going. Okay. Well, let's let's do it again. <laughs> no, I want to keep going. I like this. <laughs> okay, well, uh, several years ago, we were in uh, Nigeria. We had, we had flown to Nigeria on a, on a data and an agronomic project. And through the course of the time there, we, we met with, with Chief Adu. And Chief Adu was one of the leading agricultural thinkers at the time. And he actually took us on his, uh, out to his farm uh, just outside of Abuja and uh, we were able to spend some time with him and his grandsons and actually did some soil testing right on his farm and uh, taught his grandson how to diagnose the sulfur deficiency in a crop that was actually growing adjacent to the farming operation. Uh, today, uh, Chief Adu is Minister of Agriculture for the country of Nigeria and just to give you a handle on this, Nigeria is north of 180 million people. It's the most populous uh, country in uh, in Africa and 70% of the country is agrarian so uh, they're trying to lift their subsistence farming up to a higher level of prosperity and it's really exciting to see the developments going on in Nigeria right now. What's been holding them up? Well primarily uh, what's been holding them up is uh, is, uh, is is policies that haven't uh, made it uh, easy for farmers to access new technology. So we're very excited to watch Nigeria take the lead role in bringing forth some genetically engineered crops into the marketplace. Uh, bugs attacking cotton are a huge deal. And if bugs attach co attack cotton, and I don't care if it's organic cotton or whatever kind of cotton, the bugs attack cotton. And you have to control those bugs in cotton primarily with insecticides, either with uh, synthetic or organic insecticides. But Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a organic insecticide, is built inside of cotton, and that creates a cotton called BT cotton that uh, basically resists the bugs from attacking the cotton. And they've just opened up BT cotton for the farmers of Nigeria to use. So that's been a really exciting development. And then on the on the uh, on the on the cropping side of things for 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 food, they just released uh, BT cowpeas. Again, same deal. Instead of spraying insecticide on the crop, uh, you have the cowpeas that have the organic insecticide or the organic protein inside of the cowpeas, so that the cowpeas resist uh, the insects, and you don't have to use insecticide. Not cool. Very cool, I think so. Uh, and I mean, BT is something that we've been using in North America and in, I mean, India and in Australia with great success, yes? Yes, uh, well, we're right now uh, we have BT cotton, BT corn, BT soybeans, BT squash uh, in North America. In India, no, in Bangladesh, they have BT uh, eggplant or brinjal. And uh, the really interesting development in India right now is Indian farmers are smuggling in uh, BT brinjal to start growing it so they don't have to spray on as much insecticide. This is a real win uh, for agriculture and, and the environment. Uh, farmers are able to grow a crop without having to spend money on insecticide. By not spraying, you reduce worker exposure to insecticide and uh, that reduces the impact on the environment and the protein that's inside the plant that causes the bugs to stay away from the crop is uh, easily digested by human beings. So that cry protein, the BT protein, uh, affects the alkaline gut of insects, but to humans, we just uh, denature or digest that protein like we do any other protein. So it's a very elegant solution and a real big win that most people don't know about on the genetic engineering front. Yeah, it's one of those ones that's uh, not intrinsically tied to uh, to chemical application in the way that herbicide tolerant crops are. So well, I it think... isn't tied to chemical application at all. In fact, I call it uh, dechemicalization because by using BT technology, we actually drop down the amount of insecticide we use on crops, and that to me is an absolute win. Again, most people wouldn't uh, associate 
dechemicalization with GMOs, but it's exactly what happens in so many of the cases. I don't know how I feel about that term, dechemicalization, but uh, we'll put it out to the audience. Uh, please comment below and tell me if uh, dechemicalization is uh, is a good term or if it's a word salad. Uh, but uh, there we have it. We have dechemicalization. And oh, come on, Nick. It makes sense. It's, uh, the BT it's just a sloppy the... word, though. Dechemicalization. Well, I, I mean, it could be unchemicalization, or... but dechemicalization is the reduction of chemical use on crops. It makes sense to me. Okay. I, I agree. There's an occasional check-in with Rob for you, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Occasional check-ins with Rob.